thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's always great to be in Berlin. And even more, if it's attending GSConf, it, I like it how powerful and vibrant the community is. This is my second year, and it's not just a pleasure, but it's a great honor to be in this side of the room as a speaker. And, um, well, it's amazing. <laughs> First of all, let me tell you that I have not watched Inception. And you may be thinking, which kind of person has, has not watched that movie, and why is he choosing the title then? Well, any possible reference to the movie is just a plain coincidence. coincidence. It is just that for this particular talk, I like it how JS Inception sounded. Because this talk um, is about implementing themes of JavaScript engines in JavaScript. And I wanted to use this very nice logo that, that, that uh, I've been thinking uh, to use for a while, which is all CSS, and that I have been tweaking, tweaking a bit after CSS Conf the other day. Um, so well, this is all HTML. And it's not JavaScript. But let me introduce myself. Uh, as uh, you know, I'm Adrian. I'm from Spain, but I live in Helsinki. It's a bit funny. I actually do enjoy the winter. Uh, it's cold, yes, but it's very nice also. But there's other things I enjoy a lot. One of them is free software. Another one is getting into trouble. Uh, the first one, free software, that's what got me into Igalia six years ago. Uh, and I'm working there still, uh, in the compilers team, and I hope for years to come. The second part is what got me into virtual machines and compilers. It's not the most useful thing for people to like, and it's also maybe a bit of low level for GSConf. But no worries, we're not going to touch almost any C++ code today. And yeah, I said trouble because those beasts, those beasts can be quite complex. Um, and lately, the last year and something, we have been collaborating with uh, Bloomberg. They have been supporting us uh, to bring ES6 features into JavaScript engines, not only V8, but also some Spider Monkey, and also a uh, modern layout to CSS. Uh, and if you have not watched it in CSS Conf, I would recommend you to check out the grid layout talk that, from Friday. It was very nice, and it was amazing to see all the positive responses in Twitter while the talk was going on, and it seems that it's something people are going to like. That's very nice. So in for today, I'm going to explain a bit what is this inception thing about. How do we get the JavaScript into our engine, more exactly in V8? And while we have time from the, from the talk, uh, we'll keep trying to come up with a small implementation for a, a feature of ES6, try to add it in V8, and refine it a bit as long as the, as much as the time allows. So there's going to be live coding. I hope nothing blows, because this is the kind of thing that can go wrong. Well, to make things even clearer, there's things I'm not going to touch in this talk at all. Uh, this is not about transpiling. This is not about uh, uh, changing JavaScript, transpiling it from ES6 to ES5 to current engines or anything like that. It is not about transpiling other lang languages to JavaScript. It is not. It is not about implementing a JavaScript engine in JavaScript itself. That can be done. It's surely a lot of fun. And it's the kind of thing you do when you have a lot of time. But we're more interested in getting our things into actual browsers, getting them in Node.js, get them in places where people would use them, in established browsers. So this is more about adding features into a JavaScript engine trying to touch the less of C++ as possible. Uh, because the thing is, once the, la the basic virtual machine, the engine, is, the basics are implemented, there's not much that would prevent to use the language itself to implement things. Uh, this is the same that happens with C or C++. You have the C compiler. The C compiler, uh, you can use it to build the C library or to build the C++ library, and then use that in our program. So why wouldn't we use JavaScript to implement parts of JavaScript or parts of the standard library, or at least as, as much as we can, and then use that in our own engine? Well, actually, we can, and there's a good number of reasons to do that. I think we can all agree, being in GSConf, that we prefer to use JavaScript than C++. It's easier. It's a bit faster to develop. We don't have to go with all this uh, code, compile, build, test, uh, check the bug cycle. So that gets faster. It makes us more productive. And very often, the, the algorithms are 
more easily understandable and more maintainable uh, if we just write them down in JavaScript. And anyway, there's another reason, which is why not doing it? I can do it, well, let's just do it just because. And there's one or two not so obvious reasons. And one of them is that the modern just-in-time compilers are really, really, really good at generating machine code. They're so good that they can make faster code than our handmade C++ code. And how is that possible? It's amazing. Well, the thing is that if we implement parts of the runtime in C++, there's still going to be a moment in which the JavaScript code has to call into the C++ runtime. And there, there's two worlds. There's the JavaScript world, there's the C++ world. And whatever you use in the JavaScript world, you have to convert it. You have to convert the values to C++ values, arrange the stacks, arrange other things, make sure you call into C++ with proper calling conventions. This takes time. This layer, this layer of butter in the middle of JavaScript world and C++ world takes time. If the functions I'm doing are likely to be well implemented by the JavaScript engine, We'd, we'd rather implement them in JavaScript because we avoid all this jumping from C JavaScript to C++. And that's what makes it faster. Also, engines nowadays make very good guesses about types of things, so that you can just more, most of the time notice, well, this is integers. Let's just generate perfect code for integers. So yeah, they make very good code. So there's no, there's no reasoning that would say, yeah, let's make it C++ because it's faster. It doesn't need to be, and it may be slower in C++. And well, anyway, again, just because, and because it's fun. Uh, to give you an idea of how much JavaScript is using engines, this is from yesterday. I, have, I made the numbers yesterday. Uh, I've been checking the, with um, a tool to count lines of code. There's, um, there's most of the JavaScript code is using B8. Next is SpiderMonkey following very far JavaScript core, only one kilobyte. Maybe they're trying to make one of those one kilobyte JavaScript contests or something. But well, the fact is uh, there's one reason for that, and is that JavaScript core can revert to an interpreter. So it doesn't always generate machine code. So in that case, of course, it's faster to use a C++ runtime that you have to, to, to call into. So that is my guess about why, why JavaScript core is not using more JavaScript. Of course, these numbers are not counting uh, test suites or tools, etc. So it's the runtime or the parts of it that are implemented in JavaScript. So UB8 looks like the perfect match for this kind of task. And that's one of the reasons why I have chosen B8 for the, this demo today. So I was saying, we're going to implement an ES6 feature. So I've been checking until last week which features, features from ES6 are not yet in B8, that also they can be implemented in JavaScript, that also nobody else is already trying to implement them to try to come up with something new that it's not done by anyone. And there's one thing that it's not done, and it's a lot of methods from type arrays, which are, well, similar to the ones in normal arrays, but they just work with type of arrays, this kind of int8 array, int32 array that have uh, um, contiguous memory baking. And for example, uh, those are used um, by um, ASM, GS, etc. So for today, let's implement int something array for each. And well, the code is very easy. It's what we could do in a polyfill if we were patching the prototype ourselves. Uh, there's one slight small thing that is not uh, handled by this function. So let's see a more spec compliant version. And is this a second argument to, um, for each? That we can change the binding of this for the callback that is called for each of the elements. So this is actually the, a version that we can go and implement now. So let's do that. Have some music for this. Okay, let's reset this. So you can see in SRC inside V8, there's a number of JavaScript files, and there's one that is called typed array that looks very good. 
Let's go there. Type in array. It has JavaScript. Oh, surprise. Great. It has uh, well, several things that look a bit not so much like JavaScript. Let's just go to the end and patch in our prototype. So for each is the function we're implementing, callback, this argument, oops, function keyword, that's important. Well, if this is undefined, then no, not this, but this, the argument passed, is undefined, then the spec says that this argument should be the implicit this, the usual one for this function. So it goes that way. Let's make a loop. This is like all most of the loops that go over arrays. This is this length. There. So we call the callback. We use this call function to change the binding of this. And we pass the item in the position there. That's known. Can it really be this easy? Let's check it. Let's build it. It's, of course, only generating some stuff, building only the, well, building, including the JavaScript into V8. I'm going to talk in a moment about how this works. Oops, extension or internal compilation error. Hmm, that doesn't look very good. Maybe the JavaScript in here is not as javascript -y as expected or as advertised. But let's, go, let's look a bit around. There's this setup data view, for example, there. Let's more things here. Let's see what it does. Ooh, this is a bit funny. OK, there's more things. Oh, install getter. Hmm. Maybe it turns out we cannot use getters directly in JavaScript while we are implementing things in the runtime. Hmm, maybe, maybe. Let's see if there's any other setup function. Hmm, setup type it arrays. Maybe we should move our code here. Well, there's also install functions. Hmm, that looks good. But look at this. It actually accesses this prototype here. And it uses global. Hmm, probably there's some kind of module system thing working on here. Let's try adding this global in the front. And maybe it works. Again, the build phase is fast. Let's see if it complains this time. Blah, blah, blah. This time it works. That's great. So amazing. We have just became B8 hackers. 10 minutes. Who wants a full CS degree and a compiler's master's? It's not either. Let's just go fetch V8 now, uh, start hacking JavaScript in there, and well, make the engine do whatever you want it to do. All the linking is what takes more of the time. I should be building release versions, but anyway, doesn't matter. But I actually want to show that it works. It, it, it sounds a bit strange that during the compilation phase, it actually spits the errors and says, well, I'm compiling this JavaScript. Well, it actually is uh, because it makes sure that the, it's not going to generate errors later at runtime, and the kind of compiled version is included in the, the V8 library. Ah, there it is. Now, let's make an array. Three elements, for example. So do we have for each? Woo, we have for each. <laughs> but hey, we have to see if it works. Maybe it doesn't work. For example, we can change one of the elements. That's usual semantics. So let's see, for each function, well, we can even do for each print. Hey, it works. Wow. So we have now a for each that works. We implemented it in JavaScript. It was pre-built into machine code when building. What else we can ask for? Well, there are a couple of things we could improve here. Oh, let me stop the music. There. So uh, that's a couple of things that we would be tempted to do now. Because there is not only int 8 array, there's int 16 array, int 32 array, blah, 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 all, all of those arrays that are typed arrays. So we would be tempted to do this. This would actually work. We could patch all the prototypes. Well, it's a bit, a bit of work. We have to duplicate. 
those lines in the end. But of course, we can do it. But this does not, it's not necessarily a good idea. Remember that the compiler doesn't, is not specialized in one version of the code for each function. So it, uh, it may fail in its guess, its guess for the types. So what we want to do is rather have a copy of, each, of the function that is exactly the same code inside, but each, uh, each one of the arrays gets its own version. So when the compiler makes an optimized version after doing guessing the types, it can do the perfect version that matches each one of the types. Uh, and now this is a really starting to get a bit tedious and a bit boring to write all those. So fortunately, I was saying there's some strange things there in the JavaScript code that V8 uses. They have a kind of macro expansion thingy that we can use to, well, to make one implementation that generates one copy for each of the, for each of the functions, for each of the right array types. Um, and this is going to be good because the code generated for each one of the versions, once they get hot and they have been used for a while and the types have been guessed, uh, the code it will generate is, well, the best it can. So let's see how we can use that. And I'm going to board you again with the same music. OK, so let's go back. They're still in typed array. There was just a tap typed array up there. Let's cut this. Let's go up, 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 up. Set tap typed array. There it is. Hmm, macro type of array, array ID, name, element, size. That looks like a, it's generating copies of things. And this name thing here, that's being replaced. For what? Well, for name is, is int 8 array, name can be int 16 array. Let's then move our version here. Uh, so, paste. Let's be nice and intended. So instead of intake array, we write name. Hmm, is that enough? It seems. So well, now each version of type of array supported by V8 automatically gets a for each function in, in its prototype, and each one gets its unique version. So this should make it that in each one of the type of array classes, their prototype has a for each. That's super. Let's see if there's any syntax errors or things. Oh, there's an error again. This was not planned. The other one was. <laughs> so what's the problem here? I don't think it's the, maybe it's that. Hmm. It's a bit picky because the macro expansion is not very smart. So sometimes the errors appear where in places one doesn't expect. So let's see. Aha, now it seems to work. Yeah, so be, be sure to always put colons and semicolons and all the delimiters you need because you never know how the macro processor is working. I have not checked the code, it just works. Sometimes makes things, we have the delimiters, things work again. We're still out of time. <laughs> so good. If it sounds like elevator music, it's because it's almost elevator music. I, ha I had to make sure I was picking something with free of rights and this kind of things. Well, the 8 is already built. Maybe I can just run the 8. I'm going to add harmony. Also, ooh, we should deny it. Probably it's not marked executable yet. That's a bit of a bummer. If you want to hack in compilers, get a fast machine <laughs> with lots of memory for the linking. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna add harmony this time. There we are. Let's see, int 16, array, prototype, for each. Oh, yeah, it's there. Let's see. Will it work this time? Let's try again with int3 array. Yeah, it works. Seems to work. Let's make another one. Next, this time, uint32 array, two elements. For example, 
beef rich. Uh, let's, let's, let's try that this argument handling works, the second parameter. Uh, to make it even nicer, let's make, let's make this an arrow function. Ooh. So let's print this plus x. And let's pass a string, for example. Why not? Hey, it works. Wow, amazing. And arrow functions are starting to work. That's so cool. The, don't, don't rely on the scoping of arguments in this so far. But it works. And we got automatically uh, from a simple implementation, from, a, from just one implementation, a copy of the, um, of the function in each one of the prototypes of all the typed array classes. So that's super. We could make it a bit nicer. We could use those install functions stuff that we saw over there. Uh, and then we, once it's nice enough, we could send it for review and get it to be eight. And we are just one step, uh, one step afar from being, from being a person that has a commit in a JavaScript engine. So I hope after this talk, you all go hacking your laptops to start implementing all those missing uh, type array methods. It will be, get a bit tough with the review process, but it's, it's going to be nice. And you will be also compilers, hackers. Um, there was those funny things in the V8 code. Uh, this is not the type of array. I can actually show this one. This is from normal array. Normal array. So we have the code for, of, for each here. And it has these things. There's this check object coercible. There's this to object to uint32, but what, was, what is this? Was it JavaScript without types? Is spec function? Wow. Person sign, get the fault receiver. Well, those things are there for a reason. Um, so there's certain things uh, we should know about the V8 runtime, and similarly happens to Spider Monkey. it's just that it's different. Uh, that's a different approach to certain things because it's not as fast to do everything in JavaScript, or it's uh, not possible to do all, all of everything in JavaScript, because this thing I was saying, the initialization of the runtime library is done early during initialization of the, of, the, of the JavaScript engine. So there are certain features that may not be available. And also, to implement certain parts of the JavaScript specification, uh, we need more information. We may need if a, to know if a function is an arrow function or a normal function. And we can know that an arrow function is an arrow because when we try to make new function, it will throw, and the normal one doesn't. But throwing an exception is very slow, or slower than just checking a flag. So actually, the runtime exposes these so-called not native functions, which allow to introspect the runtime. And the JavaScript code can manipulate and know more about the internals of the runtime. So of course, this is all in, uh, implementation dependent. That, that's why it's different in V8 and it's different in SpiderMonkey. Um, and the parser actually knows about this. There's um, a low native syntax flag. We can try those things in the V8 interpreter. And there's a lot of functions. Uh, there's some helper functions done in JavaScript. Those are the easiest ones to check. So these helper functions are these ones that don't have the, the person sign. And the functions correspond roughly to operations as specified in the language specification. So for example, there is in the specification, there's a definition of what two object is expected to do. And the algorithms in the specification are written down using, uh, as reference, those basic operations that are also implemented as helpers here. So the algorithms that exist in V8, most of them try to mimic the algorithm, the way it's written in the, in the ECMAScript specification. So that's good because it's easier to find how it corresponds to the spec, but it makes it a bit harder on us implementing JavaScript engines. So I would recommend to, just, to check this, uh, to check this uh, native JS, yes, um, runtime JS, yes, macros, PI. And there's also uh, the C++ functions like this get default receiver. This gets what would be the this default argument for a certain function. So it checks chains and other things that we, have, that we have known implicitly when we were doing the first implementation of forage. 
And you can check those in runtime CC. And there's a um, function. There should be a runtime function there. Each runtime function is declared with this macro. So for example, there's a get scope count. It counts how many scopes there are. Well, you actually need to know a bit of the engine to go over those. But with a bit of time and checking code examples from the rest of uh, B8, it's not that difficult to get to use the same constructs as the, as the uh, engineer really does. So just check the code in all the, all the other GS files and try to follow the same style and check the specification. The specification of JavaScript is quite big. It's something that may get into your way. And it may look like a wall that is difficult to go over because it's not written in a very accessible language. So looking for examples in the rest of the JavaScript code is better. And of course, at some point, you will need to check the spec to make sure things work as expected. Um, about B8 and how it's built, it took a bit. Uh, actually, it picks all the GS code, puts it into a C++ file as bytes. Uh, that is linked into lib8 no snapshot. That is used by M make snapshot, which is a, it's a small utility that comes with V8 that is built with lib8 base that doesn't include the runtime. And what it does is it generates the code for it by loading those JavaScripts and running them, and uh, dumps uh, makes a dump of the JavaScript heap where the code is and the variables and so and in a binary format that goes to a snapshot CC file and that is built in then in V8 or the V8 library. Uh, so it's much faster to load. So if you have a, uh, your standalone application that uses V8, you can modify the bootstrapper.cc file and include other files of JavaScript that you have to, you want to have preloaded and pre-compiled that are always available as soon as the application starts. So that's something uh, that is quite nice to have. <clears throat> so well, uh, we're running out of time, but I still have a couple of remarks. Uh, as results of being here today with me, <laughs> what I want you to be aware is that it's not only C++ in JavaScript engines. It's, uh, it's great to start hacking in engines, picking those slightly easier tasks in a language that we may know better or we may prefer, like JavaScript. And you can pick your favorite engine, hack on it. All of them use strong JavaScript. Don't be, don't be scared of the spec. Ask. Go to the ES Discuss uh, mailing list. Ask for clarification. Sometimes the spec is not clear, especially ES6 parts that are still changing a bit. And sometimes you ask for a clarification, and some, someone comes and, oh, this is not very well specified. Let's give it another try. So well, I hope. Um, I hope you are now all encouraged to go hack on the engines. We need more people like you to implement all of ECMAScript 6. So thank you for coming here. And thank you for becoming <laughs> hackers. <laughs>